Hey, dear Diffractive fans, welcome back to the channel. This is Mark back with you. I promised that I was going to work on some new how-to videos focused on Microsoft Fabric Data Factory. And uh, to that end, I'm going to provide for you today a new video on Microsoft Fabric Data Factory for an experienced Azure Data Factory user. This would also help you if you're coming from Synapse Analytics using pipelines and data flows, um, and you know, as well as ADF, I think you'll find this video helpful to give you some insights into the similarities and the, the differences between ADF and Microsoft Fabric Data Factory. Now, I'm not going to be able to cover everything. I want to keep the video to be fairly brief again, but I will touch on some of what I think are the important points to touch on. So to the end, let's get started and jump right in. So you'll see on my screen that I have open already an existing data factory, and I'm working on four different items. I have three pipelines and a data flow open. Now those tabs are horizontal uh, for your working space inside of Data Factory. And of course, when I say Data Factory uh, within Azure or, or ADF, I'm going to be working on a factory. When you're doing the same kinds of things working on pipelines and data flows and Synapse, that's going to be known as a workspace. And those are similar concepts in Fabric as well. Before I go over to show you these in Fabric, let me talk about a few more things. We're going to group these together and then we'll come back and do some more. So that's the tabs, the working tabs. If you look at the different items within Data Factory that I can create in a factory, I can create pipelines, change data capture to get just the latest rows that change my data sources, data sets, data flows, power queries, and templates. Now, uh, pipelines are the fundamental uh, sort of um, unit within um, Data Factory where you're going to orchestrate and automate things from a pipeline. Um, and in ADF, you can also create data flows, and those data flows require a pipeline for you to execute. In fact, if you look over on this pipeline right here, I have a data flow activity that executes a mapping data flow, which is the name for data flows inside of um, Azure Data Factory. Those are also the same data flows you'll find in Synapse Analytics. And I am calling this data flow called Metadata Checker. If I double click on it, it's going to take me to that open tab, and this is the data flow data factory, Azure Data Factory. Now you also have data sets. Data sets will define the data that you're going to read and write. The Power Query we introduced into Azure Data Factory, we did not bring this forward into Synapse Analytics. This was a way to provide uh, that Power Query and um, the, the ability to uh, transform and wrangle data for citizen data integrators using the M engine, and we scaled that out into Spark. And then Templates is the other category up here, and Templates allows you to take your pipeline and to reuse that and to share that with others in your organization. Let's flip over now to Fabric. Let's take a look at those kinds of concepts and how they surface in Fabric. So I'm going to go over to my workspace here. Inside of Fabric, we do call the overall um, area, work area, as a workspace. Let me click on my workspace over here. This is similar to how we call it within Synapse. So my workspace is called Data Factory Demo, and you can see the different artifacts that I have. A really important aspect, I'm going to move my screen down just a little bit. A really important aspect, which you're going to find in Fabric, is that because it's similar to Synapse workspaces and that there are many different things in here. There are uh, warehouse, data warehouses, there's lake houses, uh, you know, uh, Custo databases, pipelines, data flows. Um, in Synapse Analytics, those are categorized through the uh, left-hand navigation pane. Within uh, Microsoft Fabric, you're going to find those, uh, that you can switch those through a persona switcher or an application switcher at the bottom left here. So I already have my data factory picked. The key thing to think about within Microsoft Fabric is that it's a SaaS orientation of Azure tools like Synapse and a data factory. Um, and so it's using that uh, SaaS UI coming from Power BI. So Power BI is, is here. It, it's, it's located in the same spot as your Power BI. And if you click on data factory, that's how you're going to get to those artifact types or those item types, like a data pipeline and a data flow that we saw over inside of uh, inside of Azure Data Factory. So before I click new here, let me just quick go back to my data factory and show you that we have the plus up here and you can do new pipelines and data flows from here. Inside of Fabric, you're going to click these buttons and you can create a new data, data pipeline. The slight difference in Fabric is that uh, we ask you for the name up front and we're going to uh, create that uh, create that pipeline um, immediately. And it's essentially a blank pipeline. Instead of giving you a blank design service like we do in um, ADF, you're going to get these different uh, tiles that you can select. In the right-hand one, the choose a task to start is where you can find those templates. Now, a lot of what you see that I'm showing you today, if there are things that are there in 
data factory in Synapse and Azure, but not there in data factory and Fabric. It's just a point in time we are, uh, you know, working on the, the differences, the gaps and parity. Um, so for now, one of the things you're going to find is that these templates are only the templates that we provide for you. We don't have the Save As Template feature yet that's over here in Azure Factory. There's the Save As Template button right here, but that's coming and we'll be working on that. So you can pick a template and you can get started by creating your pipeline from a template there. And then we go back to the, um, I'm going to go back to the primary starting point for Data Factory and you can click on here for a, a data flow Gen 2. Now data flows within now, this is called Gen 2 because it's an evolution of the data flows that come from Power Query. What we did in Data Factory was we tried to have that separate mapping data flow, um, which is for complex, scaled out um, data transformation. Then we also had the Power Query in there. We uh, we scaled out Power Query via Spark within uh, Data Factory and uh, Azure Data Factory and Synapse. But in Fabric, we're scaling it, uh, out that M uh, execution through the uh, Fabric Compute for Data Warehouse. So you do get the scale. Um, and you get the ease of use of Power Query. And it really is a much better improvement over what we did in Azure Data Factory because the Power Query there, um, the Spark translation only translated a few of the uh, M functions, not the entire language. And here you don't have that same, uh, same set of limitations that you had in Spark-based um, ADF Power Queries. But here you're going to be in the Power Query um, interface to be able to build your data flow and to do your visual data transformations. Now, I talked about data sets in Azure Data Factory. There is no concept of data sets here within Fabric. And instead, what you're going to do, let me go over to this. Uh, instead, what you're going to do is create what we call inline uh, data sets. So my copy activity, you're going to see that I define the connection. Let me just quickly go back out to my uh, main part of the pipeline and click on the lookup activity. And in here, I'm defining, uh, again, I'm defining the table directly in line. Uh, so I don't have a separate data set that is needed. I just define the data I want to connect to here. And then the connection is right here. This connection replaces the link services concept within Data Factory and Synapse. It's the same sort of thing where you're going to have, uh, you're going to store your credentials and you're going to define your source and destination connections. You'll also find that the terminology is slightly different. So if I go back to my copy activity that I have just a second ago, let me go down into my containers here. There it is. And you're going to see that we call it destination instead of sync. That's just a normalization of the terminology between the different tools that came together from Microsoft Fabric, some from Power BI and some from Azure. So we call them destinations. But again, the, the connection is here, uh, what replaces the link services name. And then the data set is in line. So I'm just pointing directly to my tables and my data here directly inside of the activity. All right. So I also uh, briefly mentioned CDC. So change it to captures as another one of those point in time things. Right now we don't have that yet inside of uh, Fabric, but we are working on that and we'll bring that over uh, soon as well. All right. Let's go back to Data Factory and we will talk about a few of the other things. Okay. So you'll notice that my Data Factory and the same thing you can do this in Synapse as well is connected to uh, Git rep repository. In this case, I'm using GitHub. You can also use Azure DevOps but I have a branch that I'm using and I can create a new branch from here and I can uh, develop collaboratively into my own branch and then I can merge that back into the main branch and that is part of the CI CD and Git integration within um, Data Factory. Likewise, over here on the different um, Explorer items here, I can click on monitor and I can view the runs that I've scheduled and had for my pipelines as well. And then there's the concept of integration runtimes. And integration runtimes have many different uh, forms within Azure Data Factory and within Synapse. There's the self-hosted integration runtime for on-premises connections. There's the VNets for uh, connecting to data inside of uh, protected VNet. There's the Azure integration runtime, which is the cloud version, the one that's the default. And you can create your own custom versions of those as well within Azure Data Factory. And the one other thing I just quick want to touch on before we go back into looking at these concepts in Fabric is how you schedule and then trigger your pipeline. So there's the concept of triggers within Azure Data Factory. In fact, if you go over into uh, Manage, you can manage your triggers all from here. And the different types are, there's the schedule type, there are event-based uh, storage events. Um, there's the tumbling window trigger as well. Let's take a look at these concepts inside of Microsoft Fabric. Since I left uh, the last topic I touched on was triggers, let's talk about that. Uh, so there's not a concept of triggers uh, right now within Fabric. Instead, there's a scheduler. And so this is the pipeline that I created. And when I want to um, set this to run automated, unattended in the background, what I'm going to do is 
click up here on the run menu item and then click on the schedule button. Now schedules within Fabric are a platform shared, a platform wide concept. So it is a shared component within Microsoft Fabric, but here you can set your schedules and you can schedule your pipeline. Now the, the pipeline schedule is gonna be attached to that pipeline. So if I set a schedule, let's say I wanna have this run um, hourly, every, let's do every two hours. Um, and we're gonna set a start and end date. And then for end, oh, we can just set this. Let's see. When you do that and you close out this window, what you're going to see is um, you're going to see that there is not a separate way to monitor just those different schedules or triggers. Uh, instead, when you click on schedule, you see the schedule that you've applied and you apply that one schedule to your pipeline. To monitor then, there is this concept of the monitoring hub within a fabric. And so if you click on the ellipsis down here, because and actually I didn't get a chance to show you this. Let me quick talk about this. Instead of having the horizontal tabs like you have in Synapse and in Data Factory, the multi-tab experience or the items that you're working on, those show up on the left-hand side. So it's just, a, it's just a pivot from the horizontal view to a vertical view within Fabric. And if I click on Monitoring Hub, I'll be able to see everything that is running and uh, within this workspace. And it's going to be more than just my workspace, you see it's going to see um, across all the workspace that you have permission. Now this is very important because in Azure Data Factory and in Synapse, we've had a lot of asks from customers over the years to be able to monitor uh, multiple different essentially fa uh, factories or workspaces from a single place. Um, and this gives us to you without needing to use log analytics. Uh, so it's a great advantage within um, within Fabric. And then if I take one of these pipelines, like uh, the one that I have, and you click on it, you can get to that deeper level of uh, uh, monitoring that you have within Azure Data Factory, will be called sort of level two or level three uh, monitoring. And you can get the detail at the activity level from there. So you'll be taken here and you can see that. Additionally, when you're in that um, edit, the design view for your pipeline. So I go back to my pipeline over here and I click on the button at the top for view run history. I can see the different runs that were executed from this, this pipeline. And I can click on each one of these and I get the details of that run. So while I'm here, before I forget, I also wanna show you that there is not the toolbar. So back on uh, Data Factory, when you are editing pipelines, you will have a uh, toolbox, essentially. I think I said toolbar, but you'll get a toolbox where you can drag and drop your different activities onto your pipeline designer. Within Fabric, you're going to use, this is not the editor, so let me go back to that over here. I guess that's all right. Um, you will have the ribbon at the top where you can click on activities and see the activities here and the ellipses will give you uh, the full drop down here. You can also use the same thing that exists in Data Factory today is the drop down from the add activity here to get all the list of activities and do a search for the one that you're looking for. All right, so two more topics to cover real quickly. The integration runtime is one of the integration runtime types within Data Factory I forgot to mention. It's also there in Synapse is um, SSIS. Uh, that's not there yet. Again, it's a point in time thing uh, that is coming within Fabric. Um, and then the self-host integration runtime for on-premises is called the on-premises data gateway, which comes in the Power BI world. Uh, that is enabled for data flows today. We are making that work for uh, pipeline activities that'll be coming uh, really soon as well. I do want to show you too, since I mentioned it, you can just add a data flow uh, onto your canvas, just like you do with mapping data flows. You said these are going to be the Power Query based data flows. And then the same thing, you, the same way you would do this in Data Factory, you just pick the data flow from your workspace that's been shared with you. All right. And then the, so I'll leave you one other neat little tidbit uh, within Microsoft Fabric. That's another thing that's been asked for for a long time in Data Factory that you get as a benefit in Microsoft Fabric Data Factory is um, when I look at my different artifacts and things I've created in my uh, workspaces. So this is my workspace right here called Data Factory Demo. So I'm only seeing the things that are in here, but I'm able to share this workspace with others. So me and Miguel have built a bunch of different things and you can see that we have owners on that. And so you get that sort of granular uh, permission capability that um, has been asked for for a long time inside Data Factory. You're gonna get that in Fabric Data Factory. So Miguel created this data flow. And if I try to edit that, I can't until I take it over and that becomes a shared um, artifact with me. And then there's also this concept of a browse view. So if I click on the browse up here, I can see now different artifacts and different workspaces that I have access to. So not just this one workspace, but other workspaces as well. So there's a lot to cover within Microsoft Fabric. This was just a, a quick intro for those of you who are already comfortable with the, um, Azure Data Factory and coming over to Microsoft Fabric. Hopefully this helped you understand some of the concepts a little bit better and there'll be much more to come. Thanks again for watching. Enjoy. And thanks for using Data Factory.